viewers, I am your biology teacher. I'll be taking you through the Nigerian Educational Research and Development Council curriculum for senior secondary school to biology. First, we'll be talking about the benefits of studying biology. The first is that it makes you aware of your environment. You know what goes on in your environment. You are able to interact properly with the environment. Then the second one is that the roles and the function of other components of the environment you will know. You know what is friendly with you, what is harmful, what you should take, what you should not take, what you should relate with freely, and what you should be cautious in relating with. Also, you will know about yourself. You have a knowledge about yourself, your body, the components of your body, the way to treat your body, then the way to treat other organisms in relation to your body, that is plants and animals around you, in relation to your own healthy living. Then another thing, another benefit of studying biology is that it helps you to know how to deal with your body, hygiene, cleanliness, prevention and control of diseases. So how to maintain your body, how to stay healthy. Biology will help you, inform you about that. Also, we'll talk about the courses that you can do with biology. What courses can you do after your secondary school? What courses can you move on to study with your biology? First is biology education. You can go to study biology to teach others just as I'm doing now for you. Then you can learn Go to study botany or plant science. Botany is also known as plant science. You learn more about plants. You specialize on plant science. Also, you can move to study zoology. That's specializing in animal science. Then microbiology. You study microorganisms around. Then biochemistry is another course you can study under biology. Also, you can study agriculture and its related courses, animals, animals boundary, animal science, agriculture generally plant science, plant breeding, and the likes. Also medicine, I know you like that. Medicine, you can study medicine with your biology. Dentistry, the study of the teeth, you can study with your biology. Pharmacy, drug production and everything that relates to that. That's pharmacy. Then nutrition and dietetics, it's another course you can study with your biology. Food and nutrition, you know, Want to set up each the tree, want to know more about your food, how to prepare good food, then healthy food that you can eat to prevent certain diseases. Also, environmental management and study courses that relate to the environment that you can be able to help the society at large. Also, the available jobs with biology in relation with these courses that I've earlier mentioned. You have medical doctor when you study medicine. You you another one is risk. You can become a researcher just working in a laboratory in any of the fields, discovering things. You know, yeah, research is going on every day and new things are coming up. So you can also stay just decide to stay in the laboratory and bring up new discoveries. Also, you can become a botanist. By studying plant science, a zoologist, by studying your animal science, you can become a dentist when you study dentistry, dietitian, doing uh, food and nutrition, or nutrition and dietetics. Also, you can become a lecturer or a teacher, a biology teacher. Also, you can become a microbiologist, you can become a pharmacist, or agricultural. So, um, biology is very wide, so you can do a lot of things with biology. Now we move on to talk about our syllabus, what we have to cover in this class. And it's divided into four teams, team one, two, three, and four. For team one, we're talking about classification of plants. Our plants are classified agriculturally and botanically. Then team two, we talk about the organism at work. So we talk about digestive system, transportation system, respiratory system, and the excretory system. Then we move on to talk about team three. We we'll talk about that's the organism and its environment. First, nutrient cycling in nature, ecological management, association, tolerance, adaptation, and pollution. Then we we'll talk about conservation of natural resources. Then we we'll talk about pests and diseases of crops. Then the last thing for SS2 will be team four. That is continuity of life. 
and under that we'll be talking about the reproductive systems in vertebrates, reproductive systems in plants, and pollination in plants. So sit back as we move on to talk about these topics. Now we'll be talking about the botanical classification of plants. Plants can be classified botanically according to their structure, presence of flowers, and the mode of their reproduction. Botanically means in terms of plant classification, that is in relation to botany. You know, the other time I was mentioning botany, zoology. So according to plant science classification, you mean that they are classified botanically and they will be classified according to their structure presence of flowers, and the mode of reproduction. So, the first is the spermatophytes, also known as the seed plants. They are green seed dead plants, including most trees, shrubs, and herbaceous plants, and grasses. In this class of plants, seeds are present. You wonder if there are some plants that do have seeds. Yes, there are some. So, in spermatophytes, they have seeds present, then many of them reproduce essentially and do not need water for fertilization. So that these are the characteristics of the spermatophytes. Also, some of them possess body of stem. They possess body of stem, leaf and root with well-developed vascular system. Then they are divided into two or classified into two. We have the angiosperms and the gymnosperms. That is another classification entirely. So the angiosperms, they are flowering plants, then they are mo the most complex plants. They possess true roots, stem, and leaves. They produce seed with two integuments and are enclosed in ovary, which ripens into a true fruit. They possess special reproductive organs and flower, and they are usually hermaphrodites. Amaphrodites meaning that both sexes are found on the same plants. The male and the female organ are in the same plant. That's what is, that's what is meant by amaphrodite. Then they are found in all habitats, both aquatic and terrestrial. They have the male and their male and female gametophytes develop into pollen grains and the ovules respectively. That is, the male gametophyte develop into pollen grains while the female gametophyte develop into ovules. Then, angiosperms are also classified into two classes, the monocotyledons and the dicotyledons. Monocotyledons have one seed present in their seed. They are one seeded, one seed, one cotyledon, that is the meaning. Then, their flower parts are arranged in threes or multiples of three. So, their calyx and corolla are fused. But, but the both works are similar. Roots, their root system displays the fibrous root system. Fibrous root system, to refresh your memory, is the type of root system in which you don't have a main root. You have a lot of roots protruding from the same points. It's not as if you find, okay, this is the major root, then you have the other minor roots. No. In fibrous root system, you have all the roots branching together from the same point. So you cannot identify which one is the main root. That's the fibrous root system that I'm talking about, and it's found in the monocots. Their leaf base is broad, and the leaves have parallel venation, except in yam. You know, parallel lines, lines that do not meet. So, when you cast your mind back to your grasses, normal grasses that you find around the Imperiata, Sinidica, and the rest, you will discover that they have lines. Then their stem is rarely woody. The vascular bundles of the stem are scattered and are many. Vascular bundles you see under the microscope is not something you see with your eyes. When the anatomy of the plant is done, that is where you can see the vascular bundles of the stem stem and they are scattered. They are not arranged. When you see them, they are scattered in the in the stem and they are many. Monocots don't have pits, they have little cortex, they are no cambium. Cambium is the structure that is responsible for secondary growth. That is, you you discover that some plants live year in, year out and they become so big and are established. For instance, your mango tree. 
if you don't cut it down, it will live there years after years after years. Unlike your maze. Maze, after a year, you won't find it there anymore. So, what makes the difference in your maze and your mango tree is that in maize, there is no cambium. So, there is, the, the, it doesn't have stamina for longevity. After a season, it just fizzles out. But cambium revitalizes the energy of the plant, so to say, so that it's able to produce in another season without dying off. So, that is the function of the cambium. The monocot, and another characteristic of the monocot is that the, their xylem is not star shaped. Xylem is responsible for conducting water from the root of the plant to the other parts of the plant. So, you cannot see the xylem also with your naked eye. It's a, it's a structure that you see under the microscope. But because of the transverse section, when you look at the transverse section of the monocot, you will be able to see this particular structure. So, it is not star shaped. Also, the mode of germination of seed is hypogeal. The mode of germination of seed in monocots is hypogeal. Then examples of monocots include your rice, your millet, all grasses, onion, banana, palms, and the rice. So, so those are the examples of monocots that we have around. Then we move to the second group of plants, of angiosperms now. That is dicotyledon. So, like, you know, I said angiosperms are divided into two monocots and dicots. So, dicots are two seeded leaf plants. They have two seeded leaves. When they first germinate, you discover that you have two seeded